90.3 WHPC now presents Law You Should Know. The law affects every aspect of our lives, our home, our jobs, and our recreational activities. Now, learn about the law and how to protect yourself against the loss of your liberty or property and learn how to stand up for your rights and seek compensation when you have been wronged. Your host for Law You Should Know is attorney Kenneth J. Landau, a past dean of the Nassau Academy of Law and frequently lectures to lawyers on ethics and avoiding problems with clients and to the public on how to choose and use lawyers. This is Law You Should Know on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hi, this is Ken Landau and welcome to Law You Should Know. Because lawyers and unders are under a tremendous amount of stress, we're going to hear from Tin Schur, who's an author and a hypnotist, and he'll tell us about ways that lawyers and others who are stressed, especially during COVID, can help to unwind and relax and help those they know to do so as well. Tim, welcome to Law You Should Know. Thank you, Ken. It's an honor to be with you today. Before we talk about some ways that lawyers and others can relax in, in dealing with the word and the, the, the world and the clients as well, what are some Tell us about the books that you've written, especially One Belief Away. Sure. So I've been in uh, coaching practice for 26 years, and it seemed like every five years, I would accumulate a lot of really amazing tools and insights and strategies that were helping so many people with uh, stress and anxiety and bad habits. And so I would put those tools and strategies into a book uh, to be able to share with others and now... Um, one Belief Away is my latest book. It's my sixth one. And, uh, and it teaches people that you're literally one belief away from having a real breakthrough in your life, whether that breakthrough is more inner peace or uh, making more money or improving your health or increasing the happiness in your relationships. It all comes down to our unconscious beliefs about ourselves. And when you upgrade a belief that was holding you back, it transforms the way that you show up each and every day. And this is a, a a belief as opposed to a breakdown. Yeah, breakdown is a good a, thing. Yeah, yeah. For, we go from breakdown to breakthrough. So usually we have a breakdown because we have a set of beliefs that are creating self-sabotage or a tremendous amount of pressure. Like a lot of lawyers have this belief that I can never stop because I'm getting paid by the minute or by the hour. And so I have to always be working and always be pushing it until often uh, they just can't handle it anymore. And that's when the breakdowns happen. And we're trying to cope by eating or drinking or smoking or drinking Diet Cokes to try to keep ourselves moving. But uh, if you don't take those pit stops and recharge your batteries, uh, that's when the breakdowns happen. And this is especially true for lawyers and other um, work-driven individuals. Yeah, high-achieving professionals and a lot of my attorney friends Uh, because of the work, because of the amount of reading, because you're trading dollars for hours, uh, it's just constant pressure. And, you know, you can make a really good living, but if you're not having any kind of life balance, and if you feel like all you're doing is working, then it eventually isn't worth it anymore. And, And a lot of times we sacrifice our health. So you'll see a lot of attorneys that have put on 50 pounds since COVID hit, you know, a year ago. And uh, they're just more stressed than ever. So what can we do to uh, slow down that track or take a break from that track and avoid that total breakdown? Well, the first thing we got to do is take a look at what are the beliefs that are driving the behavior, right? If, if you just try to change your thinking or you try to have a more positive attitude, it'll feel like you're kind of lying to yourself or you're, you won't believe it or you'll think that you're just being delusional. So you've got to find what is the belief that's driving you. And sometimes the belief that people have is that, uh, you know, I built this giant hamster wheel that I'm on. And if I get off of it or I take a break, that my business is all going to come crashing down. Or that if I slow down, I'm going to lose opportunities. Or that um, if I take care of myself instead of taking care of that next customer or client, that uh, I'm going to lose business. You know, and so the belief is somehow I'm going to lose out. Somehow I'm not going to be safe. Somehow bad things are going to happen. And if you upgrade those beliefs and start to switch them so that you're realizing that no matter what happens, you're going to be okay, that when you take care of yourself, you actually make more money, 
uh, and you kind of think of yourself like a cat. No matter what situation you're in, you always land on your feet. And are you upgrading those beliefs or you're kind of replacing those beliefs with the ones that give you a sense of fulfillment, relaxation? Yeah, excellent question, Ken. You're really upgrading them. You're getting rid of old beliefs that cause fear and stress that make us feel like we're not good enough or that something, you know, we're not safe. And we're replacing them with new beliefs that help us feel secure and confident. So the one that, that the one, the belief that you're not good enough, what do you replace it with? I am enough. I'm already good. I'm already whole. I'm already complete. I don't have to prove it. If I had to prove it, I did that a long time ago. I mean, most of the lawyers that I work with have very successful practices. You know, they've made it. But they're very, always worried. But they're always worried. They're always stressed. You know, they have a hard time relaxing. They have a hard time letting their guards down. They have a hard time trusting other people. And it creates a huge amount of stress. And because they're supposed to be the one that's professional and in control, they are always pushing it down instead of talking about it, or they don't have anybody to talk to. And so, you know, a lot of attorneys end up having heart attacks or drinking too much because they're trying to get rid of that pressure. And you mentioned a lack of trust, mm-hmm. maybe in themselves or in others. I mean, besides lawyers, do a lot of people, a certain dynamic, have lack of trust or uh, at, you know, to their detriment? Yeah, pretty much that all of us. That perpetuates their anxiety? Yeah, pretty much all of us. We all have our insecurities. And insecurity comes from the deepest fear that I'm not good enough. Out of, I've, I facilitated over 15,000 individual coaching sessions over a 20 year period. And I was floating around in people's unconscious minds and the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of rejection, the fear of humiliation, the fear of being embarrassed or abandoned, abandoned. All those fears come down to one core fear that I'm not good enough. And because I'm not enough, I won't be loved. So how do I get that love or I won't be safe? So how do I get that safety? And that's when we start developing all these dysfunctional ways of trying to feel safe and trying to feel like we're good enough. And is it also because they're over focusing on some event, maybe that doesn't even involve them and that's driving the anxiety? Well, that's what worry is. Worry is the misuse of imagination. Yeah, it's the misuse of imagination. When you're worrying, you're imagining what you don't want to have happen. And then we're paying for it emotionally in advance. You know, we're the worry, the and insomnia. And physically, too. Our heart, our, our, our mental health, our physical health. So do you also deal with talk therapy for that? Or that's when you bring, you try to bring hypnosis into it? Because hypnosis is one of the fields that you practice in. Yeah, hypnosis gives you direct access to somebody's unconscious mind. And your unconscious mind is like the library of your brain. It stores your beliefs, your values, your life experiences, your memories, your habits. And so it makes sense that you would go directly to the source and find the belief and shift it there. Talk therapy sometimes is like cutting the top off a weed. If you don't get to the root, it just keeps growing back. And is so, it like changing the memory chip, like you have a memory chip in the phone? It is. It's like updating. Yeah, your phones are always having updates, right? To get rid of malware and to protect you from future attacks. Well, we have mental malware, Ken. But you're also giving them a different approach. You're putting that in their head. Yes. Rather than worry, they can do... Yeah, you can start to use your imagination to imagine desirable outcomes, how you want things to go, what resources you do have, who you can lean on for support. And then that shifts your energy. So instead of procrastinating or feeling stressed, you are more motivated and you feel more confident. Can it also change the person's perspective that that's not a three alarm fire, that's a minor inconvenience, or maybe it's something that will never happen? Almost instantly, it changes their perspective, it changes how they're feeling, and it changes how they are behaving. Because when you update their uh, perspective, a viewpoint, it changes the lens that you're using to look at the world, and it immediately empowers people. And does that hypnosis take time to work, or do you focus on different aspects over different well, sessions and then need to recharge the, their batteries or well, program their brain up periodically? It's good. It's very good questions. The answer is yes. You know, we all want to make sure that we are periodically you know, upgrading our our beliefs and paying attention to what we're saying to ourselves. And that's what personal development and personal growth really is. Uh, But it's hypnosis isn't what's magic or special. What's magic is your mind. 
Your brain is what's powerful and special. It's just that most of us have never really been taught how to use the power of our mind uh, in this kind of way. So would you tell them to think about something else or, or focus on a bird or a cat, you know, rather than the anxiety no. part of the brain? No, because that's a distraction. And what happens is we try to ignore it and it gets worse. So then we try to drink it down or eat it down or smoke it down and it just gets worse. So um, what we do is we go head on into the anxiety and we assume that there's a message in there, a positive message. And anxiety is like a fire alarm that's getting pulled, even if there's no fire. And But fire alarms are there to protect us, to let us warn us of danger. So usually the anxiety has a belief underneath it that says, I'm not safe. Things aren't going to work out well. I'm not going to have clients. I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. Uh, you know, and, and those worries and fears, uh, I'm never going to be able to get out of this rat race. Uh, I never have enough time to get anything done. Uh, I feel like I should be with my kids. But when I'm with my kids, I feel like I should be working again. And so we get ourselves into the trap. So anxiety is an opportunity to be able to find out what the beliefs are and what is that perspective that you have that's holding you back or sabotaging you. And when you shift it at the core level, that's when you have breakthroughs that are sustainable. So you're in a sense reprogramming the computer we call the brain. That's exactly right. Hypnotists are like the geek squad for your brain. <laughs> and do you have to thrash out all the, the dynamics before you do that, before you no. know what points need a tune-up or you can do the tune-up first? Well, I've been doing this for so long that we can jump right in. We can get to the source and 20 minutes later, you'll have a life-altering experience that will stay with you the rest of your life. And is it, is it in part come down to belief systems? If they don't think they're attractive, you can hypnotize them so they're less focused on that, or, although they'll work, walk out with a much better uh, feeling and image of themselves? Yeah, yeah. They'll walk out not just feeling like they're less, you know, they're not as worried, but they're more secure. They're more confident. They're more, uh, they understand and value their own worth. And when they value their own worth, they feel more attractive and they feel more lovable. And, because, and when people have energy, you've seen people that are like 350 pounds and they have confidence all day long. So it's not really about how you look. It's about how you're feeling in the, on the inside and what you're telling yourself. Some people say it's how you carry yourself, how you relate to other people or situations. Yeah, but not just how you carry your, your body. It's how you carry your thoughts. You know, how, how you talk to yourself in your own mind. You know, it's like we have a bank account and, and uh, for our health or our happiness or our confidence. And every day we need to either make deposits or we're making withdrawals. And a lot of people are bouncing tre uh, checks all day long because they're not making deposits into that account. And do some people have a, a lower or a higher threshold on, on what irks them or what they react negatively to or get anxious about? Sure. Everybody has a different threshold, a different kind of temperament that um, you're born with. So some people are a little bit more relaxed. Some people are a little bit more wound up. But you can learn how to um, be more uh, engaged or you can learn how to let things roll off your back. That's a skill and skills can be learned and everybody can do it. And is it something you're born with or something that evolved in your childhood or your, your formative years or let's say in your education or, or something else? Well, our beliefs are formed in our formative years. So almost every time I work with somebody on an issue they're dealing with, and they might be in their 40s, 50s, or 60s, we always end up going to something that happened to them when they were seven years old or 12 years old. So our core beliefs about ourselves, others, and the world around us are formed when we're kids. And so we have to often go and reparent ourselves, so to speak, and desi decide as an adult what we want be to believe about ourselves. And, and is that because you, you know, you had some experience where that got it, you know, programmed into you at an early age and stayed with you? And that's been your dynamic since then? Yeah, we've all had that experience of being embarrassed in front of a class, you know, in, in third grade. And then all of a sudden we're like terrified of public speaking. Right. Or I've had I, well, a guy someone commented on your looks or sent an unkind thing or called you names. And yeah. even though you've forgotten about it, that may have stayed in you. It stayed in you. It stayed in your unconscious mind and it formed a belief that I'm not good enough. People will reject me. People are unsafe. The world is cruel. 
And when you have ideas like that, instead of just saying, no, that kid was just immature and I'm great and lovable, which we don't do, if we got to learn how to do that when we're older. Now, will you help them uh, look back and find that event or you just try to reprogram them and give them a different focus? Excellent question. Now, I actually take them back to that, what we call the initial sensitizing event. We take them back to that moment where that belief was formed. It's not the experience you have, Ken. It's the belief that comes from it. It's how you interpret what that experience means. And if you go back and you have them imagine that experience going a different way, giving them a set of tools, helping them feel protected or uh, empowered, then you can upgrade the belief. And when you upgrade the belief, it changes everything. And how we react to something, that's so important. So how a lawyer reacts to a client, a legal matter, their last win or loss, their what they view as their status in the legal field, their relationships, yes. all these circles of influence are, are causing them to feel good or bad or neutral. Well, those situations are just neutral. It's what we tell ourselves they mean. So you can react or you can respond. And people who are reacting, you know, we, re- we respond from our own level of awareness. If you have a higher level of awareness, it don't matter what shows up because you know how you're going to show up. If you have a lower level of awareness, which most people do because we don't focus a lot on this in, in our uh, society today, uh, uh, emotional intelligence, If you have a lower level of awareness, it doesn't have anything to do with your intelligence or your success level. It's just you're not very mindful. Then you're going to be reacting all the time, blaming somebody else for the way that you're showing up. Okay. And we're going to come back to our guest, Tim Schur. As you've heard, he's involved in psychology. He's a hypnotist. And he's presented us with a lot of good information. And you're listening, especially on how lawyers and others can deal with COVID. You're listening to Law You Should Know on 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nass Community College in Garden City, New York. If you've missed any part of the program or want to tell some, someone else about it, the podcast is available at nccradio.org. So this level of awareness, is this fluctuating over your life? Does it erupt maybe when you're under stress at a job or because of something like COVID? Well, I think that there are always opportunities to realize that you've got some challenges that you need to deal with, or we think that we have got it all together and we realize, you know, I don't think I do. Like maybe I am part of the problem, you know, maybe I'm causing the problems that I'm complaining about. And, uh, and that gives you an opportunity to be able to take a look at yourself to get some coaching, to get some feedback. You can ask friends, you can ask trusted uh, partners, you know, and get some feedback about yourself. Uh, or, you know, work with someone like me or read these books or listen to podcasts or these radio programs like what you have, Ken, because then it gives you more awareness and then gives you the tools and the strategies to start living your best life today. And you can take it to a deeper level than, let's say, a friend or relative, but a friend or relative can help de-escalate the situation, say you're not so bad or it's not you know, you're a good person or you're doing well or just try to hope so. Maybe they might escalate the situation. (laughs) Oh, all right. Well, right. Well, you got to be careful not to do that. Or if it's a, it's an overwhelming situation, then they need to help with a professional and need some other strategies for dealing with this. Well, yeah. I mean, if my car breaks down, then, uh, you know, I might ask my neighbor for some help, but it's probably better if I go to a skilled mechanic who knows exactly how to fix it so I can get back on the road. And especially if it's breaking down every day, then you know there's a deeper problem. You need more than that boost. Very good. That's exactly right. What are some other things that we can, you know, we can try to do to uh, help ourselves or help others to get through the challenges of the day? So the first thing you can do is change how you're breathing, right? I use power breathing where you breathe in through your nose. So you take your hand, you put it over your belly button, and then you focus on breathing in through your nose, then breathe down to your belly, down to where your hand is, and then slowly exhale. Do that five or 10 times in a row. When you breathe in through your nose, it activates your relaxation response. You will literally push this mindset reset button in your brain when you start using power breathing. Most people are mouth breathers, so they're breathing through their mouth or they're uh, holding their breath and they don't even know they're doing it and it creates tension. So shift how you're breathing. The second thing you do is you focus on asking power questions. 
Power questions focus on the out, focus you on the outcome that you want. What do I want to have happen? How do I want to feel? Uh, what's one thing I can do to start to feel more at ease? Maybe I can call a friend, watch an inspirational video on YouTube, listen to a song that's relaxing, uh, you know, or watch a, a, walk, a comedy. Or pet the cat. Exactly. All of that. Go, you know, play with the kids. Go do a random act of kindness for somebody. Uh, there's so many things that you can do that will help you to feel a sense of ease. In Indianapolis, where I live, uh, I mean, I do Zoom sessions uh, doing hypnosis with people all over the world, but I live in Indianapolis and we have these Indy race cars and these cars are built to zip around that track and win races and go fast. But if they don't take the pit stops, Ken, they don't finish the race. And most of us high performing people are trying to push through and we don't take the pit stops. And that's why so many of us don't finish. And we also need some fuel and downtime. That's right. Good fuel. Not junk. You don't want to put junk into that high-performing machine. And unfortunately, that's what we do. We're not really taking care of our body. And, uh, and then, you know, that has a consequence. It makes us feel more depressed and tired mentally. Have you used hypnosis with lawyers? Yes, many times. I have some great clients that are lawyers. And, what, and how does it help lawyers? Um, they feel more refreshed, more relaxed, more energized, more confident, and then uh, depending on what they come in for, a lot of times it's just a lot of pressure and anxiety and being overworked. Other times it's how they want to show up in the courtroom or if they're going to be on television. And, uh, and so I will teach them how to um, improve their communication and presentation skills or how to read people and how to read body language uh, and, you know, all kinds of cool things that you can do when you understand human and, behavior. And I guess also to react appropriately to situations involving themselves or others or the world of law. Yeah, because people will respond in one of two ways under pressure. They will tend to beat up on themselves, you know, and attack themselves or they attack others, you know, and really you don't want to be attacking anybody. You want to show up uh, the person that has the most ways of responding the most ways of being able to, to uh, handle the situation is the one who's really in control. And are lawyers good examples of the achiever syndrome that you describe in, in one of your books? Yes. Achiever syndrome is when uh, people feel like they're going so hard, so fast all the time that they can't ever slow down. And if they slow down, it's all going to come crumbling down. And so no matter what you accomplish or what you achieve, it never seems like it's good enough. And even if you've made a lot of money or you have a lot of success, in the back of our mind, we're worried that it might be taken away. And so it never lets us get off that hamster wheel. We have very poor um, life balance when that happens, and it burns really talented people out. And what are some things that you help the person do to slow that down or to get off that wheel? So for me, we always go after the beliefs first. And then I start to give them some more personal development skills, communication skills, um, or even just setting boundaries, you know, or doing time blocking or deciding that, uh, you know, I'm not going to answer my phone 24 hours a day, right? And so everybody has unique different uh, situations, but I usually figure out what the beliefs are that are driving that behavior and we upgrade them first. And what are some beliefs that you can help a lawyer upgrade so a lot of times they come in feeling that, uh, you know, they're just overpressured and they can't seem to stop or they're drinking too much to try to deal with it or they're eating too much because they're not really taking time for themselves. They're eating at their desk or they're ordering out. And now with COVID, a lot of people have felt very isolated and, uh, and not having a lot of social interaction. And so it's caused even more pressure. I mean, sometimes the best thing you can do is have uh, some friends who you can talk to, you know, and, uh, and just share what's been going on. And if you really want to help somebody else uh, when they're in that situation, don't try to give them a positive attitude. Just listen to what they're saying and validate how they're feeling. Most of us try to say, yeah, well, but that's okay and it'll get better. That's not what they want in the moment. They just want to be able to vent and have, and say, have someone say, oh, that really sucks. You know, I'm sorry you're going through that. So if we're on the listening end, we should say, that really sucks. Sorry you're going through that. Should we add anything else that, you know, maybe I can help or maybe uh, things will get better? Or You can. can yeah. You? Yeah. Depending on the relationship, just what we tend to do when we're listening to somebody else is kind of interrupt them and then try to put a positive spin on it. 
And in that situation, that's not where they want to be. They just want to express themselves and, and have a little validation first. And then you can offer additional help or, you know, something like that. Should you check up on them? Should you let them know, you know, to you know, call you if there's a, a problem or concern so they don't feel as isolated? And check up on them. If you want to have someone who has your back in the future, if you want to build trusting relationships, if you want to have a reputation as someone who really cares, uh, then yeah, do that. <laughs> if you want to have a great network of people who will be there when you need it, then yes, be there for them when they need it. And that's the most important thing we can do for someone. And, you know, because we hope that someone will do it for us. Yes. Yeah. We just have exactly a limited right. amount of time. Tell us about your program, The Power of Your Unconscious Mind. Yeah. Everybody that's listening to your show can get a free copy of that. If you go to powermindsetprogram.com, that's powermindsetprogram.com. It's a brand new program I created called The Power of Your Unconscious Mind. It's a lot of really cool stories about, you know, 30 years of hypnotizing people. And and it gives you a lot of amazing tools and strategies for how to use the power of your mind to feel more calm, resourceful, empowered, and happy so that you're making the rest of your life the best of your life. And you mentioned about uh, de-escalating the process, the deep breathing. Should people take time out to, to walk, to look at nature, to pet a cat or a dog? to reach yeah. out and touch someone. Yeah, those are the pit stops. That's what makes life worth living. Not just working and getting stuff checked off the to-do list, but recharging your batteries, connecting with others, taking care of yourself. That's what gives you the energy and the inspiration to sit down and get through the work that you got to get through. And so, yeah, absolutely. Remember, you don't finish the race if you don't take the pit stops. So those pit stops are just as important as racing forward. I'd like to thank Tim Schur. As you've heard, he's a, hip, a hypnotist and he's a, a healer. Just give us your website again. Yeah, if you go to uh, timschur.com, you can find all the resources if you want to reach out to me and you can find my One Belief Away book on Amazon. Thanks, Ken. Okay, any final advice? Just believe in yourself and know that you're already enough and that the answers that you're seeking are already inside of you. You might need some help finding them, but I promise you that the magic is already inside of you. And when you go within, you'll never go without. And we have the, all have the power to de-escalate, de-escalate the situation. Yes, we do. Again, whatever you've heard is presented as information only, but I believe it's valuable information for lawyers and others. If you missed any part of the program or you'd like to tell someone else about it, just go to the podcast of this program of law you should know at nccradio.org. And there you'll find podcasts of many other shows on law and law-related issues. Please join us at the same time next week at 90.3 WHPC, Garden City, Long Island, for another program on law you should know.